Welcome to Donations Through TechSoup. My name is Becky Wiegand. We will also be joined by Thomas Nutzband. I am an interactive events producer here at TechSoup, and I've been with the organization for nearly six years this spring, and have come into the position of managing webinars here after having been our manager of our, manager of our blog and working on articles and content to help accidental techies at nonprofits and libraries around the world use their technology better. Before coming to TechSoup, I worked for three different nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California, um, where I was frequently the accidental techie, and I was also a user of TechSoup's services and donation programs at all three of those. So I'm a fan <laughs> before an employee. And then we'll also be joined by Thomas Nutzman who is an account management specialist here at TechSoup. Thomas, if you'd like to go ahead and unmute, you can introduce yourself and give us a little bit of your background. Sure. Uh, my name is Thomas Netspan. I'm an Account Management Specialist here with uh, TechSoup. I've been here for about uh, two and a half years. I have uh, many years of customer service experience, and uh, I'm here to help you folks with uh, this webinar today, and hopefully I'll be able to answer everybody's questions. Thank you, Thomas. You'll also see on the back end Allie, last name TechSoup, but her real name is Allie Bazdikian, and she works here at TechSoup as an interactive events and video producer. And she'll be there to help grab your questions so that she can raise them up to us throughout the presentation. Um, we really want to make today's webinar about answering your questions. So I have an agenda outlined, but most of it is based on where are you in the donation process, and what do you want to cover today. So throughout the webinar, feel free to raise your questions up through the chat, whether it's on topic with what we're talking about at that moment or not, because we really want to make sure that when you leave this webinar that you've had your questions answered about the donation programs, about eligibility, about how to get started, registration, whatever the topic might be and that we send you off with some additional resources because we want to make sure that you can get the most out of the donations available to you as a nonprofit or library staff person. Um, you're welcome to chat into us in the chat window right now to let us know if you're coming to this as a registered 501c3 staff person, or a library, or if you are a nonprofit consultant, or from a foundation, or someplace else. It would help us to have an idea of who's joining us. So we have Mary says she's a librarian or from a library. Feel free to chat into us in that window. And then I'll go ahead and get started with an introduction of who is TechSoup for those of you who may not know who we are. Karen's with a registered C3, which is great. Another C3. That helps us just have an understanding of who's on the line with us today. And we also have some other library representatives. So Newport Ritchie Library represents. And we have somebody from a church. So they are under a C3. And then we have a librarian at two small libraries. So that's great. And you guys are the people that we really aim to serve, the people who are on the front lines as staff at libraries, serving patrons, or you are a staff person at a C3 and you need help with your technology, or maybe you're in the process of getting your 501 status, or you're representing them as a consultant. And that's great because this webinar will hopefully have you leave with the information you need to get the most donations available to your organization around technology. So TechSoup is also a 501c3 non nonprofit, and we are working toward the day when every nonprofit, charity, public library, and foundation has the technology products and services to work at their full potential. We uh, have been around since 1987, and we've served more than 210,000 charitable organizations and in more than 60 countries around the world. Today's presentation will primarily focus on organizations based in the United States. We do have donor partners in, like I said, 60 other countries around the world. And if you're not based in the U.S., we can also connect you with those organizations through our TechSoupGlobal.org website. We have a variety of different things that we offer from consulting services to new products like Windows 8.1 or QuickBooks 2014. And this is a quick look at our homepage at TechSoup.org. But before we get into the live demo of stuff on our site, I want to take a minute just to get an idea of what you've already done. 
um, with TechSoup before. So have you joined TechSoup as an individual member already? That means you, Christopher, you, Karen, you, Jane, have you already registered yourself with TechSoup? And this is something that's no cost to do. It's just signing up on our website to get an individual username. And that is the first step to getting yourself donations through TechSoup, or getting your organization donations through TechSoup. So take just a moment here. I'll give just a few more seconds so people can respond by clicking one of those buttons on your screen. And so about 60% have already joined as an individual, and about 40% either have not or use a coworker's login. And that is helpful to know. And then the other question is, has, has, have you registered your organization or affiliated yourself with, with an organization yet? And we know we have some people chatting saying that their church or their organization is already registered, or maybe they've joined but not yet registered their org. So just take a moment and answer that for us if you will. I'm going to give just a few more seconds for people to respond. And then I'm going to go ahead and ask one other quick question before we get your vote on what you'd like us to spend our time on today. So have you requested donated software through TechSoup yet? And the whole goal of today is to help make it easier for you to eventually do that if your organization is qualified and eligible. We want to make sure that you can get there and get the donations you need. So go ahead and take a second to answer that question. I'll give five, four, three, two, one. So 72% have not. So that's great. So today's webinar, I really want it to be up to you what we cover um, because we want to make sure that you're getting served and getting your questions answered. So what would you most like to cover today? And you can click more than one response here. So this is going to help guide us in what we cover. Um, would you like us to cover how to register? Would you like us to cover what does qualifying mean? Or if you, if you know that your organization is already registered and you are not yet affiliated or associated with that organization, we can go through that process. We can talk about the admin fees or how to request the actual products. And we can also go through specific donation programs. And I left that one kind of generic because you are welcome to chat into us to let us know if there are specific donation programs you want us to talk about, we can do that. So chat in what those are if you are curious. And we can try and dedicate some time to that. So I'm going to give just a few more seconds. But feel free to keep submitting those results. And if there's something that's not on this list, definitely comment in the chat. Um, as we see, we have Anna saying that she'd like guidance selecting products. Mary saying Microsoft Office. She'd like to discuss those donation programs. Great. And then somebody else has a question about sort of admin fees and what's covered with that around Microsoft Office. So we can certainly get to those questions. And like I said, feel free to chat those questions into the window at any point because we'll be covering questions throughout. We have a couple of other people asking about specific to their donation program or their organization type, so Animal Rescue. Another person asking about QuickBook, QuickBooks and Intuit products. And then Tommy's asking about when you get a donation but cannot download, how do you get some help with that? So these are all really great topics, and we are flagging them as questions. So the first thing that people voted most to cover today was how to request products. So I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop. And let me get that started here in just a second. And feel free to keep those questions coming. And I'm going to share my desktop. And just let us know in that chat window if you don't see my screen appearing for you. You should be seeing the TechSoup.org homepage. And if at any point I'm going too quickly, just chat in the window, and the folks in the room here will let me know that I need to slow down. So since we're not going to focus on the Join and Register stuff, I'm going to assume that either you've joined or you're registered or that you are likely to go through registering. And 
Oops, I don't actually need to join. I'm going to click to log in. Again, just assuming that this is stuff that you can figure out. And if it looks like we need to do a little more, we can do that at a different point. And so you'll, you should be seeing my page where I'm logged in and it says, Hi, B. Wiegand at TechSoup up at the top. Because that's my login. And it should show which organization I'm representing. And so right now it says I'm representing Test, Test, Stop Crime Now, which was the name of a fake organization I created for today's event. And so when you log in and you're registered, you should see the name of your organization up in this area. If you don't, there is a way if you represent more than one nonprofit or library or charity, there is a way to switch so that you can make sure that you're representing the organization you want to be requesting donations for at that time. Since we had people who asked about QuickBook and Intuit, I'll go ahead and I will browse to that section. And maybe we can kill two birds with one stone without actually injuring any wildlife. And so I'm going to go ahead and browse by our browser catalog by donor or provider. And QuickBooks is a product of Intuit is the name of the company that makes it. And here I'm going to see what products are available. Hopefully you're seeing my screen right now of the Intuit donation program. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the Browse Intuit Products. And we'll bring Tommy on the line too so he can weigh in and help with some of these things in a couple of minutes as well. So here we see some of these Intuit products. And there's a drop-down here. And it's important to take note of this because some of our product donation programs have these drop-downs because there are different types of products they offer. So right now we're looking at the Intuit Financial Management Software, which pretty much covers QuickBooks and QuickBooks for Mac and QuickBooks Point of Sale. And you know, with QuickBooks you can get the one user license or a three user license which allows more than one user to access it. Um, so these are ones just around financial management. In this drop-down you can also click and see Intuit Client Education and Support Software. And I'll just pull that up quickly so you can see what's here. For those of you joining us from libraries where you might serve patrons and have courses or resources available for them, um, this program in particular has an offering where you can get 25 copies of Quicken Deluxe or 100 copies of Quicken Deluxe um, or Quicken Premier 25 or 100 so that you can distribute these to your patrons. So some of our donation programs not only extend to you, the registered organization, but some of them even extend to the, to the people that you serve. So if you run a public computing center or computer lab um, through your nonprofit or through your public library, that's one program that's available to you. So I'm going to go back to the financial management. And so requesting the products, if you have only one person that needs to access and use your QuickBooks, so you have you know, an operations director, or maybe it's just your executive director that manages your finances, or maybe you have an accountant that's either on staff or that you work with, and that's the only person that really needs to use your QuickBooks, then you can request a, a single user license. However, if you have three people, up to three people. So maybe you have that accountant that's a contractor that works with you, and you want them to have access to it, but you also want to have access to it in your office, then you'd want to go with a three user license. And again, you have the option of the Premier Editions for Windows or PCs, or you have the QuickBooks for Mac version. And QuickBooks Point of Sale is if you have a cash register. So maybe you have Maybe you're a nonprofit friends of the library and you have bookstore sales like you know, a little gift shop or something affiliated with your library or affiliated with your nonprofit. So QuickBooks Point of Sale might be an option for you. Before we go ahead and request it, you have to view the details. So we'll look at this three user license. And important to look at here is the quantity. So we're requesting one. You can change the quantity. However, it still needs to be within the eligibility and restrictions. So some of our products have restrictions. And I'll scroll down a little bit. And it gives you a description of what the product is. And it 
provides three user licenses, and it says over a network up to five users can work with the organization's data at the same time. Um, it gives you a little bit of details about what is covered and what comes with it. It talks about some of the features down here. And it talks a little bit about additional services that might be available like payroll management directly from Intuit might be available but for an additional cost. So it will cover things like that. And it will also tell you to choose carefully because administrative fees are not refundable. And the admin fees through TechSoup are basically a fee based on the retail value of that product that TechSoup collects in order for us to provide the donation services that we do. So Adobe or Intuit or Microsoft might donate their products, and they have a variety of restrictions on who and which types and what budgets of organizations that they want those donations to go through. Um, and TechSoup's job is to help ensure that those are going to the right organizations. And so for us to have our pretty complicated backend system to verify and confirm eligibility, and to provide content and trainings and webinars and things like this, that's what our admin fees go toward. So then you'll also see a tab of system requirements. And this is a good thing to make sure that you check. Um, a lot of them have them listed out elsewhere on you know, the, the actual donor partner's website. So you'd want to make sure that if you have any legacy software or legacy hardware that might not be compatible, that you're checking that before you go ahead and request something, particularly if it's a brand new hot off the market product that's just launched. You just want to make sure that it's compatible with your existing hardware and software. And then you can also check the rules and eligibility restrictions. So this is important information to get a look at before you request. Um, if you go through the process to request, you'll get flagged if it doesn't look like you're eligible, and it'll not accept your, um, it will not approve your donation request. And so it will say, organizations eligible um, for the financial management program products must have an annual operating budget of less than $10 million. And so that's a requirement that is determined by Intuit. And like I mentioned before, all of our donor partners can specify that they want their donations to go to a specific type of organization. Um, so maybe they want it to go just to organizations that do housing and social services or healthcare, direct service, or domestic violence, or youth services. But maybe they don't want it to go to organizations that work on environmental issues, or churches, or whatever they, whatever they determine. It's really up to those donor partners. And TechSoup, by offering these programs, we're constantly in negotiations with all of those donor partners trying to expand those programs, trying to um, get new programs and new donor partners to offer their donations to nonprofits and libraries too. So we are beholden though to oblige by these restrictions. So it's, this donation is only available to nonprofits and to public libraries. Public libraries must either have a valid C3 status or be listed in the IMLS database. So these are the kinds of things that you want to look at because this will tell you whether or not your organization is likely to be eligible to receive this donation. So it's a good idea to look through those different requirements and rules. And then if you think these all look good, you can go ahead and add the product to your cart. And now I see up here where my cart is listed, I see one item, $99. And I can also go to click on my cart at any time. And it lets me see what's in the cart already. And it also shows me up here the steps. So I'm currently I'm at step one. I'm viewing my cart. But it also shows me the steps in the process to receiving this donation. So it will check to make sure that I'm not restricted from receiving it, that I meet those eligibility requirements. It will ask me to agree that I am who I say I am, and my organization is valid and what I say it is, and that I agree to the terms and conditions. It will ask me to verify shipping and delivery. Most of our donated software programs are electronically delivered rather than delivered by boxed product in the mail. So it may imply that you'd get this ground shipping, but very often you get a fulfillment email 
um, either immediately after or within a few days depending on the donor partner that will have the information on how you can download and install that product. It will ask you to review and enter your payment information, and then it will confirm. So that's the process for requesting actual products through TechSoup. We can go through some of this together, but it's a fake organization with a product that we are not actually going to request, so I'm not able to use a fake credit card to go through the whole process. But I can update totals. I can proceed to the restrictions check. And this is where if my org type is not eligible, I would get a flag in my cart. And I think this organization, I think I made it a pretty widely accepted um, organization type, so it's unlikely that I'd get flagged on many of the products that I'd request. But you, know, you may get a flag there. And if you do and you think you should be eligible, then it's time to reach out to our client services folks like Thomas. And so what I want to do is I'm assuming that we're getting some questions in. So I'm going to go ahead and bounce back out of this for a moment and hope to answer some questions and see what we've got here. I'm just going to go ahead and advance slides quickly just so there's something here. Um, yeah, and if I could just uh, come in here too, Becky. I'm noticing there's someone is asking about um, refurbished computers. Uh, they, they want to know about refurbished products. So I was hoping maybe we could sort of tell them a little bit about uh, refurbished computers, and maybe you can sort of guide along with me on the screen. And um, if we could just go to the main TechSoup page and look on the top left for um, providers. Absolutely. So I'm going to go back to sharing yeah. my desktop, and hopefully you can see the TechSoup.org screen. Yep, I see it here too. And then we're going to go to Get Products and Services. Yep. And then Browse uh, by Donor or Partner. And then it's usually in the third column on the very bottom is Refurbished Computers. And yep. um, I think it's important to discuss our Refurbished Computer Program. Um, it's, it's a great program. The, the computers are offered in tiers. You have a low tier, mid tier, high tier. And basically breaking that down, low tier means if you're just going to use the computer for say emails or just something simple like Microsoft Word or, or something like that, then a low tier may work for you. You know, a mid tier is a little more powerful. It allows you to do sort of more multiple things. And then of course high tier, which uh, most of us tend to work on a lot th these days, is doing several things at once. Like maybe you're in Photoshop and you're sending an email and you're doing an Office document and you've got your Excel spreadsheet open. A high tier computer would be good for that. And you can certainly browse the um, different uh, selections by going to the blue button that's in the middle on the left, and it says Browse RCI Products. And if you click on that, it will go ahead and populate a list. Now you'll see it says Browse Products. And then there's two drop-down menus. <clears throat> and the first one you'll see if you want servers, printers, monitors. So we're going to select computers since someone was asking about refurbished computers. And then if you notice, it defaults to a high-tier desktop. But if you want a mid-tier or a low-tier, you certainly can do that. They even have these desktop monitor bundles where they bundle the actual desktop and of course the monitor included. Okay, so we'll just uh, go ahead and do a, say a high-tier desktop computer, which is the top option. And um, go ahead and scroll down a little. You'll see the different refurbisher partners that we offer and you'll see the different pricing. So if you click in View Details, let's say on the second one, the Dell Core 2 Duo Windows 7 Desktop, which is $270 admin fee, okay? it will give you a description of that product. And then there is a tab next to it for system requirements as well. And then of course the rules and eligibility of the program. So that is basically how you get into the refurbished computer section and sort of browse around for products. Okay? So hopefully that answers that question. So let's see. I will say our, re our refurbished computer program is pretty widely available to um, most 
of the organizations that register with TechSoup and are qualified with TechSoup um, because this is a program that we help administer. So we work with the companies like interconnection.org, which is another nonprofit based in, I believe, Washington State that does some great refurbishment programs. And they factory refurbish, and so they list off all of the details. And I believe they also will list off any warranties that are included. And so, for example, this computer is covered by a 90-day warranty from the refurbisher. And they also have things like free recycling and take back at the end of the life of the computer so that you aren't stuck with a chunk of hardware that you need to figure out how to dispose of properly. Um, so definitely look through all of those, both the specifications and the details that are on these pages when considering any of them. This one at the moment is listed as out of stock, and that may just mean that, we're, that interconnection is waiting on getting more of those in stock, and then we'll add that back. So if you see something out of stock, it may mean that it's switching over to a, a newer version of it. If it's something like QuickBooks 2014 for example, we have that in stock now. Um, however, a few months ago when it came out commercially to consumers, we didn't yet have it in stock. And it took a couple months to get it into our catalog after they released it to the general public. So if you see something like that that's out of stock, definitely check back. And my, my best recommendation would be um, if you want to know when something's back in, that you go up here to the top of our website and subscribe to one of our newsletters, in particular the one that's called New Product Alert. And that is really going to let you know as soon as something is available in our catalog, you get an email blast. <laughs> you usually only get that twice a month um, at most. So it's a great low volume email to get that really does keep you in the loop on what products are available in the catalog when new versions of things are released. So it's a good, good list to sign up for. And for those of you who are joining us from libraries, we also have a once a month newsletter that's just dedicated to libraries, focuses on topics that are most of interest to your audience, and it's written by libraries. And then By the Cup is the other newsletter. This one's sent weekly. We do have product mentions in it, but it primarily covers things like what articles and content and how-tos are available, as well as um, listing things like upcoming webinars. So that's just a little plug for that. And, and Becky, we have another question here. I'm, I'm noticing um, that there, there's a question about someone who, who is actually from Cynthia. She's conducting a class on how to use QuickBooks and wanted to offer the participants who cannot afford to purchase. Now unfortunately, uh, the TechSoup program is, is actually for 501c3 nonprofit organizations, not to really for students or to offer QuickBooks to purchase at a discount for say any of your students. In fact, the QuickBooks program only does allow one request of QuickBooks accounting per fiscal year. So you can get a one user license or a three user license, but it would have to be used by the organization not to be given to any students. So I just wanted to make sure that Cynthia got that question answered. Okay? Yeah, thank you for that clarification. So the one that I mentioned that you can distribute to your patrons and your, your community members is just around the Quicken product through Intuit. So that's for your personal financial management rather than an organizational or business financial management. Um, yeah, that's a good questions? point. Should I, well, I, I'd I like to stay on the screen and answer some other questions or show people some other things um, based on what they'd like to see. So. Do you have anything else flagged that we should try and get to right now with the questions? Yeah, well, I mean, one thing that I do you know, want to clarify too, I'm noticing that um, Julia had mentioned uh, that she wanted several copies of Microsoft Office. And what was the admin fee? And is it per copy? And I did respond to her letting her know that it is per copy. So if you have five computers, the admin fee would be times five. And she had said, well, I can get that for a retail rate. And uh, actually I think there's a miscommunication going on with the retail rate. I think what the retail rate that you're thinking is, if you times that by 5, it would give you a retail rate for one copy okay, of Microsoft. So you know, when you go to a store and you request Microsoft, it's for one user. So you can install that Microsoft on as many computers as you like. The license is for one user. 
So you will need multiple, uh, a multi-user license or a volume license. And then we can offer five of those licenses at $32 each. So if you, if you sort of look around and, and see, you'll see that you're not paying that retail price. You're paying a fraction of that. In fact, you're just paying us a small admin fee and you're getting the product donated. And that, that donation includes two years of software assurance which is an added feature which allows you to upgrade or downgrade for two years of the purchase date if they come out with another version. So I just wanted to clarify that a little bit for folks on how that works. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that, Thomas. That's helpful. And yeah, I mean, if, if you go into Best Buy, like when I used to run a small office here that opened in Oakland before starting at TechSoup, we bought most of our computers at retail stores like Best Buy. And when we wanted to have Microsoft installed, or most of the products that were available even at you know, a store like Best Buy already had um, an operating system installed, and so it would have Windows Home Edition or you know, whatever version of Windows, Windows XP or Windows Vista, and now it's mostly Windows 8 that's on them. But it would almost always be the consumer-based version, the home version, not necessarily the professional version. So it's also important to keep an idea of what types of programs you're coming that are coming with the computers you're purchasing if you're getting them from retail outlets. Um, and if they offered to come with a version of Office, so Microsoft Office which Thomas was just talking about, they would often come with a student or home version license that was still a couple hundred dollars extra for that one license on that one computer. And it usually didn't have many of the other programs that like an Office professional does. If we had somebody who asked about um, Office in particular. So I'll go ahead really quickly to the Microsoft page. And here Microsoft donates a lot of different products to us. So if you're looking for something very specific like a server license or user cals, feel free to browse. You can also look over here to some of the top Microsoft products. So if you're looking specifically for Office or a version of Windows or an operating system, these are going to be some of the easiest ways to get to those. So I'll go ahead and click on Microsoft Office. And it pulls up the different versions and options available to me. One thing that um, is also helpful, I mentioned that nowadays when you go to buy a new computer, whether it's from Dell or CDW or Best Buy, it's almost always going to come with Windows 8 and the latest version of Office, whether that's compatible with some of your other programs or not. So one of the benefits of getting the software assurance which Thomas mentioned is that it allows you to request the older versions and upgrade to the newer versions. So it really, and it's totally free included with your donation from Microsoft. So if you wanted Office Standard 2013 or Office Professional 2013, that's the newest version of Office 20, Office 2013 is the newest version of Office, and it comes with a suite of all 10 products which includes your Access Database and Publisher and Excel and PowerPoint and all the other ones that are really great products that we use in a business environment. Office Standard comes with seven different products. So it does have Excel and it has um, Outlook and it has Word and most of the products that you use regularly. But that home version or student license of Office that you might get on a consumer grade computer is likely only going to have Office uh, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And so if you use an Access Database for anything, if you need access to Publisher to make you know, diagrams or posters or banner art, um, just be aware of the version that you are getting because a lot of them don't include all of those. Um, and again, these are per, per user, per license. So if you have five workstations, you do need five licenses. And that's whether you get it through TechSoup or whether you get it through Best Buy or any place else. We're not trying to sell to people because we are a nonprofit too. We just want to make sure that people are aware of the licensing requirements and that if you get a box package um, at a retail store, you're still not allowed to install it on five or ten computers without purchasing licenses for those. We know people do, but you know, following the rules, um, you would have to have a license for each. 
And then the other thing to note is that you can also get the older versions if you need something like Mac 2011 or Office 2010. You can get those. You can roll back and downgrade to the most recent prior version. And this is more important, it's less important with Office than it is for programs like X, uh, operating systems. So if you have a computer that you got that has Windows 8 on it, and you hate, it, <laughs> hate Windows 8 because it's just not what you like, or it's not compatible with something else that you need to use for your critical um, business purposes, having the license through TechSoup and having software assurance with it um, allows you to downgrade and back yourself up to Windows 7. And I think you can even maybe go back to Windows Vista, but most people would just go to Windows 7 <laughs> if they needed to. And if Windows released a newer product within the next two years of requesting that, that allows you to upgrade for no additional cost directly through the Volume Licensing Service Center on Microsoft. And again, that's just free. So that's great. Are there other questions yeah. that have come in? Yeah, I think an important question staying on Microsoft is that people are asking about the rules and the restrictions as far as uh, how, how that works with the Microsoft program. And you know, that is available under the Rules and Restrictions section of any product. You can certainly look at that. But to just put it in a, a quick nutshell for folks, basically the Microsoft program works on a two-year cycle. And that two-year cycle begins the date of your first request. And this, this new program started July 28th of 2011. So anything after July 28th of 2011 would have started your cycle. Okay? So when you have a two-year cycle based on that request, you, you actually are allowed 10 title groups and 50 licenses per title group. And a title group, you know, uh, is basically just um, – Office is a good example of a title group because there is 2010, 2013, Office Standard, Office Professional. There's a lot of different versions of Office, but they're all still Office. So they consider that a title group. So you are allowed 50 licenses in that title group, and you can spread them out in the two-year cycle. So if you need five now, and then three months later you need another five, then that's 10, and you're left with 40. So you also get that in nine other title groups, and you get five server softwares, and they can be of the same kind. Okay? So that is basically, in a nutshell, the Microsoft program. They're a very generous donor. So hopefully that answers that question. And I'll add that if you, um, if you say, run a computer lab or a computer center, and you have um, or you have a series of computer labs because you have a branch of libraries and each library has a computer lab. And so you need software for 200 or 300 licenses. Um, volume licensing can still assist you, but you are still, at least through this, this donation program with TechSoup, still maxed out at 50 on those individual title groups. Um, if you refurbish computers, there are some other programs outside of TechSoup that might serve refurbishers with volume licensing needs as well. So just keep that in mind that there are other resources we can point you to. And if those are things you need more information on, feel free to chat us and we can try and email you directly afterwards with any links to those resources. Do we have any other questions that have popped up? Otherwise I'll jump back to the survey and look at what other people wanted to cover too. Yeah, I think there's just one more really quick one which Julia is asking. And she's asking about, do you have to renew the licenses yearly? That once you pay for the Microsoft license, is it, year, is it a yearly build subscription? And no, it is your license. You own that license. You know, if you're thinking maybe Office 365, which Microsoft does offer nonprofits, uh, depending on what you sign up with, with them, that may be a subscription-esque service. But the actual licenses from us, they are your licenses. Okay? They're not subscriptions. Okay? Yeah, and, and just to clarify the mention of Office 365, for people who aren't familiar with what it is, it's based in the cloud. So it's on the Internet. So we do have donor partners that are online services like um, ReadyTalk, for example, that we're using today as our webinar platform. They also are a donor partner. And so you may have a subscription service that you pay through them for the services that you access. So they may have something beyond what our admin fee is based on what, um, you know, what the service is. So if it's a cloud storage service, 
where you are hosting your files in the, over the Internet, there may be an annual service fee for that that you pay directly to that donor partner or to that vendor. Um, and you know, depending on the service, like I mentioned ReadyTalk, they have audio conferencing and webinar hosting and a variety of things that they offer. And they may have a fee that they charge per minute per user. So it's really important to look at the description and any of these tabs down here, the system requirements and the rules and eligibility before you go ahead and request a donation. Because we do have some of those products where the admin fee to TechSoup might be $10 for example. I'll I'll bring us to a Citrix page. Citrix Online offers a variety of different services that are, are subscription based. And they have things like GoToMeeting and GoToTraining and GoToWebinar, all of these different things that are listed here. And the admin fee for some of them, you know, GoToAssist is $10, but it gives you access to their discount. So make sure that you read those details carefully because we want to make sure that you are getting what works best for your organization's needs. And a subscription service to a cloud vendor might be exactly what you need, or a desktop install installed software might be what you need. So just make sure that you are looking at those details. I'm going to go ahead and jump us back to the survey that we had people participate in earlier. And you can keep those questions coming in. Um, so we covered how to request products, and we've talked a bit about admin fees, and we've covered a few specific donation programs. Um, Eligibility and restrictions was another one that people had a lot of questions about. And so I'm going to jump back to sharing my screen again. And I'm just going to go ahead and take us to the home page. And so for those of you who have not yet registered your organizations, or even if you have registered your organizations, we have a handy dandy tool that people overlook frequently because it's somewhat hidden on our site that is called Check Your Eligibility. And it's an eligibility quiz. And I recommend doing this before you register your organization because oftentimes you know, the organization I worked for most recently before TechSoup was an organization that worked on women's issues, but it also worked, on, it worked with youth and leadership development. And so when I went to register that organization with TechSoup, I was really torn on what to select as my organization type and subtype. Oh, so this one, because I'm already logged in and registered, it's asking me to select which organization I want to look at. And so I'm going to just pick one of my test organizations. And I'll say, I'm going to look at my current Youth Are Awesome organization and see what donation programs I am most eligible to receive, or most likely eligible to, to request donations from. And this lists out every donor partner for which I can request donations on TechSoup. So if I came to TechSoup's website because I heard that you could get Adobe products really inexpensively, and Adobe was not on this list, and I thought, well, why the heck not? And I click on Adobe, and I look at their eligibility requirements, which I can go over here on the Adobe page, and I can look at their restrictions information. And I can see, okay, so my organization has an operating budget of less than $10 million. Check. And I'm a C3 nonprofit or a public library. Check. And I think, gee, I think I should qualify and, and be eligible for this. And then I look and I say, okay, so I'm not a fraternity, sorority, or Boy Scouts, or I'm not a refurbishing program. And then I think, okay, legis legislative and political or advocacy group. Well, if I picked because I worked for a women's organization, if I picked advocacy group, then that might have been what eliminated me from being eligible for that organization or for that donor program. But if it's just as legitimate that my organization does youth and leadership development, then if I changed that or if I selected that when I registered my organization, that may open up the eligibility for me to access those donations of Adobe. And again, these need to be you know, there needs to be a legitimate case for why you would qualify uh, under both categories. But if you've already registered and you find that you aren't eligible for something that you think you should be, then it's a good opportunity to talk to our client services folks. They can do some verification with you. You may be asked to provide a letter on letterhead that states what things you do that meet whatever the new org type criteria are. Um, 
I'm going to log out of my account really quickly just so I can show you what that eligibility check looks like for people who are not yet registered because that one already had my details selected since I was, I was prompted to select a new or one of the existing organizations. Just taking a moment to log me out. Come on, log me out. And once it logs me out, the, the quiz really asks you to denote your annual operating budget, um, what your most accurate estimate is. It does not have to be dollars and cents exactly. Um, here we go. And so I'm going to go back to that Check Your Eligibility page and take that eligibility quiz quickly. Our site is moving a little slowly right now, so I apologize for that. But it asks you to have your annual budget and to list what your org type and subtype are. And org type and subtype are based on the list of org types and subtypes that the IRS has, and they call them their NTEE codes. And so these aren't just terms we made up because we thought that they sounded obscure and abstract. Um, these, were, these were terms set by the IRS, and so we use those as the guidelines. So I can check that, okay, I'm a 501c3 nonprofit or library or library without C3 status, or that I'm none of the above. So I'm going to select that I'm a nonprofit, and I'm going to say my organization is based in, in Colorado or California because that's where we are. And then this is where I select my org type and subtype. And so if I had chosen advocacy and an attempt to influence public opinion concerning political activities, the full name of that category, then that might have been what eliminated me from being able to access some of those donations with the women's organization I worked with. But had I selected, um, where is it down here? If I had selected youth activities because we did youth and leadership development, and then I select the org subtype that we did youth development programs, and I entered in our budget that we made. Oops, and I think I need to do it without any commas. And I select, okay, we had a, an annual op operating budget of $900,000. We were just shy of a million. And I go to Check Eligibility, and now I see that same list, but it's been tailored to what my organization is most likely el eligible to request. And so I see, okay, I want, wanted the Microsoft. I wanted the Intuit Accounting QuickBooks. I wanted to have access to SAP's business intelligence software. And it's cool that I can also access Shopify or Teespring or some of these other ones that I might not know a whole lot about, but all of these donation programs are open to my organization now. And I want Esri. Somebody mentioned Esri earlier and that they use um, one of the ARC GIS programs. And Esri is a donor of ours. So if that's something that you're looking to have graphic information and mapping systems software available to you, then Esri is on the list. Um, so I would recommend doing this whether you're registered or not. If you're already registered, this just helps give you a broader view of all of the different programs that are available. Each of these links will take you to that donor partner's landing page which will describe what kind of stuff they offer and what their offers look like and what the products are and what the costs are. So definitely check them out. Um, you know, for example, Flickr. People are like, why would I need Flickr? I can just go use it for free. Well, you can, but you can't get a Flickr Pro account with all of the benefits that come with that. Um, and so it's you know, great to take a look at all of the options available to you that, through that. So I'm going to bring Thomas back on. I think he's got some other questions to raise up. Yeah, um, there's a couple questions that are sort of circulating. One was from Anna, and she's asking about um, training. And, and I thought this might be a good time in these last few minutes to talk about some of the training and consultant services that TechSoup offers. And she was saying that she basically has XP. She's about to upgrade to 8.1 Windows and is clueless, is not sure about training. So one thing I had recommended was you know, there are a lot of online resources that you can, you can look for, in fact, even in our forums. And also, uh, we have 
training programs that you can look into, one of them being Atomic Training, which is a great service. That One of the great things about Atomic Training is that they have little shorter videos because you know, the mind tends to learn better in little shorter pieces of information. So they may have like you know, how to bring up your contact list on uh, Windows 8.1, and they'll give you a two-minute tutorial on how to do that. So I do recommend Atomic Training. And, and Becky, maybe you may want to talk a little bit about some of the consultant services that we offer too, and, and maybe show some folks some of those as well. You know, so um, sure. you, you know, I know we only have a few more minutes, but I thought maybe we'd just sort of touch base on some of the yeah. you know, other really great programs that TechSoup offers. Yeah, there are actually quite a few different ways to get training. And specifically, if you mentioned Microsoft programs, one thing to look into um, initially is that your software assurance that comes with Microsoft gives you access to free trainings through Microsoft directly, which is kind of great too. They have a whole section um, in their Volume Licensing Service Center that allows you to access free courses on a lot of their different products. Um, some of the newer, like brand, brand new products like OneDrive, they may not have a lot up there yet because that just was released like yesterday. But um, for things like the different Office Suite products, or if you want to learn how to use Outlook better or Windows 8 better, they have a lot of different resources and videos, and, and that's available directly through Microsoft's Volume Licensing Service Center. And that's something that, again, you get with your donation through TechSoup. And you can get to that through TechSoup with getting your license keys. Um, other options too, we have Easy Learning. They offer a variety of courses on everything from specific software products to um, you know, how to be a better manager at your organization or how to develop a communication strategy, all kinds of courses. And then there's also Society of Nonprofit Orgs, SNPO, and they offer a variety of courses and trainings on everything from you know, workforce issues and HR for your staff who might have to deal with HR issues or, or manage people, and um, to again some of those different software programs. Additionally, we have some newer consulting services that we've started offering that I mentioned earlier on, and I'll just click on Tech Impact because they are one of the partner nonprofits that offers individual consulting services. So they used to actually be an NPower. So for those of you who are familiar with NPower nonprofit organizations around the U.S., they were previously an NPower, and they are a nonprofit too. And so they have different specific areas that they'll offer consulting and help do assessments. So for example, if you're looking to maybe migrate to Office 365, they have an hour-long assessment that they'll do with you to help you determine if it's the right move for you and how to best go about doing it. They also have Tech Advisor, which is just another one-hour consultation that they'll help give you advice and answer your tech questions if you need them, one-on-one -on -one training with a technical expert at a nonprofit that really understands, um, really understands nonprofit technology needs. Same with their managed IT support assessment. So they have a variety of things. So this one, NP Talk, is access to their phone service discounts and rates. So you know, a lot of different options in here. So I would definitely take some time to check it out. And then one other thing on the resources um, on how to get training is that we do have a whole section of our website that's just dedicated to articles and how-tos. So if you're looking for, you know, and our blog also covers a lot of this, and so do our webinars. So I'll click on our articles and how-tos quickly. And this is where you, know, you can find articles that really go through the steps of are you ready for Microsoft Office 365? Um, do you need the basics of grant and research or prospect research? How do you do that? And a lot of these are written by either internal tech experts here at TechSoup, or they're written by nonprofit consultants that we work with that work with nonprofits hands-on every day. Some of them are written by library staff about their technology needs. So again, I would recommend that if you're with a library that you definitely look at TechSoupForLibraries.org because that's where we really have most of those resources collected. Things like tips for troubleshooting with software, funding technology products, and a whole variety of topics down here that you can click on that um, will take you to articles that just go on and on. <laughs> so, you know, and you can also just search at the top of our screen 
left. I'll go back up here just so you can see where to search. You can search. So if you're looking for information on Windows 8.1 and do a quick search, you can see the different product donations that pop up on this first tab. But you can also look at the articles and how-tos. And there are articles like Should You Upgrade? Questions to Consider, How to Upgrade, and this is actually the steps on doing it. Installation of those ISO files. Somebody had mentioned earlier in one of the chat messages that they had trouble downloading and installing their, their donated software after they'd requested it. A, an email, or not an email, an article like this might help address the, the problem. I'm not sure what the specific problem was. But there are a lot of resources that we have on our site that we try to make easy to understand and easy to use. We also talked about software assurance a little bit. And so there's an article here about volume licensing, how to access those software assurance benefits like those free trainings or the ability to upgrade or downgrade. There's a lot of benefits that come with it, including a home use program where you can have um, the donated product installed on your work computer and also have a copy installed on your home computer without needing an additional license. So that's a, a really great benefit to access. And it comes with all Microsoft products except the little window of products that's just with Get Genuine. And because I mentioned it, I'll have to say what Get Genuine is. Um, Get Genuine is if you are looking to do a one time ever in the entire life of your organization, one time ever upgrade to legally installed Microsoft products, meaning that if you have like a Windows Home version, and there is no path for you to upgrade to Windows Professional, and you really need to. Or say you got donated computers that had software on it already, and you don't own the licenses, and you don't know how to get them or find the keys. This is your one-time option through Get Genuine to upgrade any of those products um, to legitimate professional version licenses. So all the other Microsoft products that we've mentioned come with Software Assurance except for the Get Genuine. So once you've upgraded, um, then you can access with your next donation request. After that you could access the Software Assurance. So I hope that makes sense. It's a little confusing, but we want to make sure people know about that because there are a lot of donated computers that get deployed in offices that don't always have legitimate software, or you don't know how to upgrade ever because you don't have the license keys. And it can make it really tricky for organizations to get on newer software. So I want to leave a couple minutes. We're almost done, but are there any other questions that came up that we should try and zip through? No, I think we've answered uh, everybody's questions. And uh, I want to thank everybody today for all these great questions. I mean, I must say this has been an excellent webinar with really great questions. So I want to thank you all for your very, very good questions. Thank you for that, Thomas. And I just want to point people that if you have more questions that come up, definitely take it to our community forums, TechSoup.org slash community, where we have people like Thomas who are helping on the back end of those, responding to questions and chatting. And we also have nonprofit tech experts that help manage those forums that can help answer your specific questions, whether it's about our donation programs or about a specific piece of software, or just a good idea of what they use to solve a common tech problem. Um, and also we'll point you to these few resources. A good place to look for other questions to get answered are the TechSoup Product Donation FAQ, again pointing you to that eligibility quiz. And then feel free to join us for more webinars. And next week we have a couple of them coming up, one for libraries next Wednesday that will be on digital media and digital, digital maker spaces in libraries, and one next Thursday that will be on whether or not to use managed IT services, what they are, and whether it's good for you. With that, I'd like to thank Thomas for joining us and helping present on today's webinar, and to thank Allie for helping on the back end. We hope that you've gotten your questions answered today, and that will help you get started on getting donations through TechSoup. I'd like to finally thank our webinar sponsor ReadyTalk for making the use of this platform available to us so we can provide these webinars on a regular basis. Please take a moment after the webinar has closed to complete the post-event survey in the pop-up window. That will help us continue to improve our programs. Thank you all, and have a terrific day. Bye-bye.